well hello guys and welcome to the cam crown channel today we are going to discuss the history or background of the discovery of the electron and let me tell you that what was going on in the late of 1800 when the scientists were trying to find out the answer for what these substances are made of and it was the John Dalton who proposed his atomic theory and he said that matter is composed of small particles which are called atoms. With the help of his law, he successfully explained the law of mass conservation, law of multiple proportions and law of definite proportions, uh, which was the biggest success of this theory. But the main drawback of this theory was that uh, Dantel himself had no idea what the atoms itself are made of. John Dalton had no idea what the atoms are composed of, whether the atoms are indivisible in nature or whether the atoms are further composed of some smallest particles. Well, the answer to this question was given by J.J. Thomson in 1897 he, when he um, discovered the electron in the discharge tube experiment. So for now we are not going to discuss the J.J. Uh, Thomson uh, discovery of the electron. We will discuss it later at the end of this uh, presentation, at the end of this class. But for now we are going to discuss the discharge tube experiment or cathode ray experiment. Okay. So here you can see that um, the discharge tube is actually made of a glass in which two electrodes are sealed. Now here you can see the discharge tube uh, which is made of the gloss, okay. Now there are two electrodes uh, which are sealed inside this uh, discharge tube. The one electrode is called cathode which is negatively charged and the other one is called anode which is positively charged and these two electrodes are connected with the source of a battery, okay. Now you can also draw uh, the picture of discharge tube in this way and I think this uh, would be far more better because uh, it will give you more information about the discharge tube. So here we can see the two electrodes uh, which we discussed already and uh, this uh, discharge tube is connected with a vacuum pump. Okay, the discharge tube is filled with a particular type of a gas molecules. Now the question is why we connect uh, this discharge tube with this vacuum pump. So the answer to this question is uh, we want to pass the electric current through these gas molecules and we want to study um, that current. So that's why uh, we decrease uh, the pressure inside the discharge tube by, dec by decreasing the concentration of the gas molecules in this uh, discharge tube. Now the question is why the discharge tube is connected with the vacuum pump. So the answer to this question is uh, it is connected with the vacuum pump to decrease the pressure or concentration of the gas molecules inside the tube because in case of higher concentration of the gas molecules the current the current don't flow through the gas molecules because they act like an obstacle in the path of the electric current so that's why the electric current don't passes uh, through these gas molecules so that's why the the pressure inside the discharge tube is decreased and when the electrodes uh, at this time is connected with the battery so the electric current passes through the gas molecules and the tube uh, starts glowing. Now again the question is why the tube starts glowing. The answer to this question is the tube starts glowing because when the electric current passes through these gas molecules these molecules go towards the excited state and when they uh, come back to the ground state they release the energy in the form of light so that's why the tube uh, starts glowing and this process continues uh, till uh, the 
electrodes are connected with the battery now when the pressure inside the tube is further reduced with the help of this vacuum pump and the voltage across these electrodes is further increased then an array of particles uh, is produced uh, which moves uh, from the cathode towards the anode and uh, this array of particles uh, was called the cathode rays and um, these rays were discovered by the William Crookes because uh, this work was all done by William Crookes and here you can see that uh, these rays were produced and these rays are negatively charged these rays were uh, discovered by the William Crookes because all this process was carried out by the William Crookes and um, these rays are negatively charged uh, because uh, you can see that the ray of particle uh, which was produced moves from cathode towards the anode and it strikes uh, with this place uh, uh, with this place of the tube and produces fluorescence and um, this ray of particle simply called the cathode rays and it is negatively charged again i can say that these uh, the rays were discovered by the William Crookes. Now let's discuss the J.J. Thompson experiment in which he discovered the electron. So uh, now the question is how he discovered the electron. So uh, he did all this process uh, which you can see and the first thing uh, which he did uh, is actually he passed uh, these uh, cathode rays uh, in the strong electric field and he found that these rays bend it towards the uh, positive plate or anode uh, which means that these rays are negatively charged and this way he found the negative charge on these rays and the second experiment when he passed these cathode rays uh, in the strong magnetic field then he found that uh, these rays bend it at 90 angles uh, to this uh, magnetic field so in this way um, uh, in both the experiment um, the JJ Thompson uh, discovered the electron and this way all the credit went to the JJ Thompson for the discovery of the electron despite the fact that uh, all the work was done by the William Crookes uh, he discovered the cathode rays thank you for watching and see you in the next class